How Your Brain Works, Part 5, The Reality Model. In this video series, I'm presenting a model of how the human brain works with an eye toward creating AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. In the remaining videos, I will describe functionality which seems necessary for AGI, but which is not generally included in today's AI thinking. In the last video, I touched on input processing and how your brain can relate information so you can use your knowledge store to begin to make sense of your environment. This is just the tip of the intelligence iceberg, and this video will present the next step up the ladder, your internal reality model. Here are some reasons you know such a model exists in your brain. You can close your eyes and know that objects in your vicinity are still there. When you move through your environment, you know that most objects are not moving. It is you that is moving relative to the objects. You know about complete objects even though you can only see a portion of each. You sense reality at a much higher overall resolution than your retina can sense. Maintaining an internal reality model is essential to making sense of your environment and is necessary to the ideas of thinking and intelligence which will be presented in future videos. The high resolution area of your eye is quite small and your eye darts from feature to feature to build up the model. This image gives an idea of the process as you recognize a triangle and the cues which tell you that it's actually a tetrahedron. Recall from the last video that optical illusions all play on fooling various components of your input processing system. When you see any optical illusion consider what it says about your brain's capabilities and limitations. Let's consider a photograph. A photo is sort of an optical illusion designed to fool your vision into seeing objects based on the cues in the photo. Here you see a dock receding into the background, some boats, cars in the distance, etc. Your eyes dart around the image picking up features so your brain can recognize objects. The photograph fools your visual system well enough that you can see the objects in the picture. But at the same time, there are visual cues in the photograph which tell you immediately that it's a photo and not reality. It has boundaries, it doesn't move, it's flat, and it doesn't change when you change your position. To improve on a photo, we can eliminate some of its limitations. Instead of a photo, we'll take a video. Now it moves. In this video, your brain assumes that the objects are fixed and you are moving. Your brain has to remember objects so it can determine that your eye has picked up the same object again when it darts back, and that it is now in a slightly different position relative to you. We can add sound and binocular 3D. To really improve the experience, we could create a 360 video with a virtual reality headset. Now when you move, your perspective on the image can change. All these features can create a progressively more immersive experience and all these features capitalize on the limitations of your senses in order to create a more realistic effect. Conceptually, all your senses present information and your brain does its best to make sense of the inputs. Then your brain builds a 3D model of reality. Objects in the model have a direction from you, which is fairly accurate because you can see it, and a distance, which your brain assumes from a variety of cues and so is easier to fool. For the time being, you can imagine your consciousness as a little person in your brain enjoying the magnificent illusion of reality presented by the model. You can think of this model as a 3D TV in your mind, but instead of a TV, the model in your mind is the most immersive experience you can conceive of. It is so realistic, in fact, it is your reality. From a philosophical perspective, you can't perceive the outside world at all, Everything you see, hear, or touch is just in the model. Let's add one more feature to the model. At the center of the model is your body. You know the positions of your limbs, your tongue, your face. You can see a nearby object, close your eyes, and reach out and grasp it. Your model continues to show the object after you close your eyes, and you can picture where your hand is relative to the object. It's not as accurate as vision, but it works well enough to retrieve your keys from under your bed, where you can't see and reach them at the same time. Accordingly, your consciousness isn't sitting back watching the TV. It's inside the TV, experiencing the totally immersive reality model all around it. 
What types of AI already do this type of reality modeling? Self-driving cars and robots, to name two. But their models are crude relative to the one in your mind because they are purpose-built to solve a specific problem. They keep track of objects which might be obstacles, maps, or destinations, and tend to ignore many details and everything else. They often use other sensors, such as LiDAR, which can actually sense in three dimensions as opposed to an optical camera, which is a 2D device and must reconstruct a 3D model based on visual cues. The software with more sophisticated models can be found in first-person games. These models can be immensely detailed. On a side note, the huge computing requirement used by games isn't because of the maintenance of the model, it's in rendering an image from the model. In your brain or in a robot, this rendering function is unnecessary. The reality model is necessary to your brain's understanding reality and the things in it. You can have a great AI program which recognizes images of cats without any understanding of what a cat is. But to understand what a cat is, you must first understand what a thing is, and to do that you need to be able to understand that there is a three-dimensional space with things in it. The reality model is the way to accomplish this. This video has explored another element of intelligence, the reality model. In the next, we'll explore your brain's imagination. For more on this timely topic, read my new book. Will Computers Revolt? Preparing for the Future of Artificial Intelligence. Available now at Amazon and book retailers worldwide in paperback, hardcover, and ebook editions.